very unkind towards myself when I have to choose again to forgive someone when I don't forgive them the first time or do what I think is Christ-like the first time or when I feel like I'm having romantic feelings and entanglements with someone and I'm like, oh, that's a special relationship. So I kind of traced it back to shame and really to the belief in separation and everything kind of separating into pairs of opposites. And then I thought, maybe this is a symbol of the two basic fallacies that the separation ever occurred and that it's my fault. But what is a good practical application when I'm having trouble remembering it's not my fault, it never even happened? Um, I question. But... Yeah, it's, I think the most helpful thing for me was was starting to see that that you will never put this into practice in the specifics of form, that, that the ego made up all the specifics is like a giant kaleidoscope that we would think we'd keep tweaking, arranging the colors and the pieces. We could just, give me enough time, a hundred million years, two hundred million years, maybe three hundred million years, you know, it's, we're not going to to solve it in the form. So when people read those nine chapters on special relationship and holy relationship, it's written at the personal level. The healed relationship section, you know, you know, where you invite the Holy Spirit in and it's it has to come in that way because the mind is so addicted to persons. Even though the Bible said God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> the mind is addicted to persons and therefore it's got to be loosened up. And it's more like this gentle presence we hear of, I love you so, like the song, I love you so, I'm here with you, you're loosening. You're going to be tempted to, to put it out on the form, even the form of the person making the mistakes. But it's just holding on to a world of specifics is really what the mistake is. And that's a journey with the Holy Spirit, you know, that requires trust and gentleness and and like patting yourself on the back and, and being grateful for every little willingness that you can muster and say, I came up with some more willingness there <laughs> and turning it away from this kind of beating beating yourself up, which is just the ego's main uh, defense, it's its main trick. So what happens is a lot of times people like with Ricky coming, Ricky wrote emails, she threw her guitars in the car, she came and she cracked open. You know, the, the things that were there, kind of was like really tight, all those old patterns was like cracked open, cracked open, cracked open. Will you still love me? <laughs> yeah, you know, because we're so afraid if we crack open that no one will love us. You know, if we go let the darkness arise. But, but you need experiences. Of that. That's why we have our festival. So you can come and get swamped and swarmed. There's a good old fashioned outdoor gathering of, of love. You know, of love and music and dance and appreciation and gratitude. And uh, we decided to wrap the music festival with the enlightenment festival, wrap it all together. You know? So it's just one thing. So that's you know, we're right with you. Oh, yeah. Really with, with you on that. And at some point, the happy learner kicks in. Yeah. And when that day comes, hallelujah. Because <laughs> everything that you notice, instead of going, oh, you're going, oh, I see that. <laughs> and it turns to being a happy detective instead of like some kick every time. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it does. The happy learner kicks in at some point, you know, when enough of that just unworthiness and guilt splash. And then it's more of a celebration. I can feel your love shine, shine, shine. I hear you whisper to me everything is fine. 